Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today will be a different video than normal as I'm not looking at a map or hanging out with you guys in a live stream. Instead we're going to get a bit geeky and talk about the emerging popularity in Windows and Linux based handheld gaming devices like the Valve Steam Deck which is running Linux or Windows based devices like the ROG Ally, Lenovo Legion Go and the MSI Claw. All of these are just a few of the popular systems emerging in the mobile handheld market. Now these are not consoles like the Nintendo Switch. In fact, they are very much extremely small form factor PCs with built-in controllers running a standard install of Windows 11. As such, you will have the freedom when it comes to PC gaming that you would have on a gaming laptop or a full-size gaming tower. This video will focus on Farming Simulator, given my primary audience, but this holds for any PC game. Farmsim players using these handhelds can experience Forex maps, use script mods, sideload third party mods just like you would on a laptop or gaming PC, yet at the same time have somewhat a console like experience given the handheld form factor. It all changed when Valve released the Steam Deck. This one event set into motion something that we are still only seeing the beginnings of today. At that point in time, I was really curious on how well Farming Simulator would run. And based on some of your comments from a recent community poll I put out, the answer seems to be it runs very well. This holds to my own experience as of late, not only with a Windows-based gaming handheld, but also with some mini PCs that I have picked up recently. These extremely small form factor computers, which literally fit in your palm of your hand, have a little bit of secret sauce in some recent AMD mobile GPU-CPU combinations. Now aside from the MSI Claw, most of the other current handhelds that we are seeing in the market today are making use of the AMD CPU and GPU combos. For example, the ROG Ally uses the AMD Z1 and Z1 Extreme chip, which is basically a custom version of the 7840U or 7840HS, which you can find in some AMD based laptops. These chips include an iGPU, Think of it as a tiny little graphics card that's attached to the CPU itself, but they're not your father's integrated GPU graphics from a few generations back. These have some actual punch to them. CPU is 8 core, 16 thread, whereas the graphics adapter uses RDNA 3 graphics, which is the same tech that powers the current gen 7000 series AMD graphics cards just on a massive power budget and their sharing system memory. Now I know that I just got a bit technical and maybe lost some of the folks by getting to the speeds and feeds of things. So let's just say that the proof is in the pudding, so to speak, and all the gameplay that we have seen to this point in this video has been on an ultra small mini form factor computer running the same CPU GPU combos that these emerging Windows handhelds have. I have to say that I've been really impressed with the performance of these units that I have access to and honestly would go as far as to say that these kinds of systems could bridge the gap to console gamers that may want to experience the freedoms that exist with PC gaming. As I've mentioned earlier, these handhelds are running stock Windows 11 and as such, players have the ability to install games from Steam, Epic Games, GOG, Ubisoft, Rockstar, EA, or any number of other online e-tailers and stores. With full access to the file system, if you want to unlock dev mode in FS22, sure, go right ahead. If you want to play on the latest Forex map released on itch.io, sure, go ahead. Of course, there are some downsides to all of this. These are low powered systems after all. Right now, the computer that I'm playing on is pulling less than 100 watts from the wall. You won't see the same performance as, let's say, an AMD RX 7600, which is also using RDNA 3, but it's rated to draw up to 165 watts on its own. You're not going to be able to run these games on ultra settings, but I do have to say, what I see here is not bad at all. If you live somewhere where power is expensive, if you need something that is very small that can be tucked away behind the monitor, or even mounted to the back of a monitor or under the desk, then one of these mini computers might spark your interest. A mini PC like what I have been using in this video will run somewhere between $550 and $650 depending on brand and sales at the time. The Steam Deck OLED can be had for $550. Meanwhile, the ROG Ally has been on sale, Best Buy for as low as $399 for the regular Z1 version, 
or $5.99 for the Z1 Extreme. The Switch Lite can be had for $1.99 and the Switch OLED can be had for $3.39. Ah, but the Switch can play Farming Simulator 23, which is a mobile game. Same game as you can play on Android or Apple phones. Now there's nothing wrong with the Switch. We own two of them here at the house, but you're not going to play FS22 on it, nor are you going to be able to play whatever comes next. The Switch lets you play Nintendo authorized titles, yet one of the Windows handhelds or mini PCs, you're getting a Windows system that can literally just about play everything else, as the system is built around the AMD 7840U or, as we've already said, the 7840HS, and its integrated GPU plays games remarkably well. Now, I would be remiss if I did not mention our friends over at Apex Gaming Computers. We've got a partnership with them, and as such, we have three custom builds offered over at their website. We've got a link down in the description below. We've got the entry-level Yeoman, the mid-grade Homesteader, and the high-end Rancher. All of these systems come with 16 gigs of RAM, fast NVMe storage, and plenty of room in the power supply for future upgrades. If you're looking to upgrade to a new PC or jump directly to a full-fledged, powerful gaming PC, then check out Apex Gaming Computers. Once again, link down in the description below. Now, this video has turned into a bit of a talking headpiece without the actual talking head. That's because this video did not turn out the way I was initially planning. In fact, I had to pivot a few times in my initial ideas. At first, I was going to do a video about optimal settings for low-end graphics cards. To prepare for that video, I ran benchmarks on a handheld PC, as well as a couple mini PCs that I've got access to, as well as my gaming laptop and my main gaming setup. Then I asked the Discord community, as well as an open call to the community tab of this YouTube channel. After compiling the benchmark data, I realized most who had responded had 3000 series NVIDIA GPUs or higher, well above the power of these mini systems. A few systems came close to performance, but there was still somewhat of a gap. To that end, not all is lost. Here are the settings that I have been using in this video. If you're struggling with performance, then maybe some of this information will help out your own gameplay. Just for fun, I'll put a link to the Google Sheet with all the scores listed in the description. For the handhelds and mini PCs, I've also broken down the scores into various TDP. Think of it as power levels. When it comes to handhelds, after all, there's going to be a trade-off between visual fidelity and battery life. Given the small screens, mine has an 8-inch screen, visual fidelity can be somewhat easy to give up on to some degree because things are just so small versus playing on, say, a 32-inch display. But the idea that these things can be docked via a USB-C connector and then connected to a display, keyboard and mouse, or even a wireless controller, you have gaming on the go or gaming in the living room or gaming even in the hotel. Okay, so here we have my GPU settings. Right now we're using medium custom. We've got our screen resolution set at 1920 by 1080p. I figure that's basically gonna be where you're gonna be looking at as far as the resolution with these smaller powered systems. V-Sync's turned off and typically I would set the frame rate to 60, but if you want, you could bump it up to get a little bit smoother gameplay if your system's powerful enough. I've been running in full screen mode, but windowed mode is also an option there. I set resolution scaling to 100%. I leave brightness at 1.0. Field of view is default at 60%. And I like to play on a bigger screen with the in-game HUD scale set to 70. Of course, the default is 100, but you might wanna bump it up to 125 if you're playing on a mobile handheld, just so that the UI is a little bit bigger and we've left camera bobbing set to on. Under advanced graphics settings, we have multi-sample anti-aliasing set to off, post-process anti-aliasing set to TAA. Both Fidelity FX super resolutions are set to off. Intel XESS is also set to off, and screen space shading is set to quality. Shadow quality is set to high, as well as shadow distance quality. SSAO is also set to high. Light quality has been set to medium. Object draw distance is set to 100. Terrain LOD distance is set to 100. And resolution scaling 3D is set to 100. Max mirrors is set to three. You may have noticed when we go in cab, 
our frame rate drops a bit. It's because of the mirrors. You can set it to zero if you want or all the way up to seven, but I would suggest three or less for these mini PCs and handhelds. Texture buffering, I've got set to bilinear. You can bump that up if you want. Shadow map filtering, set to low. Terrain quality, set to high. Foliage draw distance is set to 150. Now, when I first was on Elm Creek at the start of this video, I had it set to 100, but I bumped it up to 150 for every subsequent video. Foliage shadows is on. Mass tessellization is 125. Realistic beacons is off. Texture quality is set to high. Max shadow lights is set to the default of one, but you go up higher if your system can handle it. Shader quality is set to high. We have LED distance set to 100%. Cloud quality is set to medium. You can drop that down to low if you want. It's gonna bump your frame rates a little bit, or you can bump up to high if you're willing to sacrifice a little bit of frame rates. Max tire tracks is set to 100%. Typically on higher end systems, I'll bump that all the way up. And shading rate has been set to low. Now let's bring this all home. Yes, this video's morphed into more of an informative piece on the capabilities of these handhelds, mini PCs, and to some extent, non-gaming laptops, because all these devices are powered by the same CPU-GPU combo that can be found in the AMD-powered laptops, or with respect to the MSI Claw, it's using one of the new Intel-integrated CPU-GPU combos that are gonna be found in Intel-powered laptops going forward. Farming Simulator 22 will run on just about anything these days, and you don't need to spend a huge sum of money to get into PC gaming in general, as these handhelds and mini PCs are coming in about the same price as a modern console. Are they as powerful as a modern console? Nope. Are they designed as console killers? Nope. They are, in this case of the mini PCs, ultra small, low power Windows 11 computers that have graphical power to play an amazingly vast library of PC games and PC focused mods while at the same time being able to be used for school or home office work. For handhelds, it's a seamless transition for Xbox players to jump from an Xbox to a handheld PC because these have built in controls that are basically Xbox controllers. Add to the mix a USB C dock, like I said earlier and you can have yourself a mobile gaming setup that can live a secret life as a home computer good enough for just about anything you can imagine. What am I going to do with the mini PCs that I picked up? Well, one of them is going to become a dedicated capture streaming system because the new chips can do hardware H.264, 265, and AV1 encoding and decoding. In fact, all the videos I put out during the National Farm Machine Show trip were edited and encoded on a mini PC. Same with this video. It's been shot, captured, edited, and encoded on mini computers. With this unified capture streaming box, I can not only easily pack it up and take it with me on trips, so I'll have everything I need to edit, publish videos, regardless if I'm home or away. At home, I can capture my main gaming setup, and then away, I'll capture my gameplay off my laptop. The other will go into the home office as a secondary computer for the family when I'm traveling with the laptop. Now I hope this video has been at least informative and maybe even a little bit insightful. If anyone is remotely interested, I'll leave some links in the description. Anything linked on Amazon are going to be affiliate links, so I do get a bit back from any purchase that results. Please hit that like button and leave a comment on your way out as to what you've thought about this style of content. And until next time, happy farming.